Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? Could The Matrix be more of a documentary than a sci-fi film? Could we be lying in a vat of goo serving only as a battery source for the computers we created? Sure, why not? Welcome to the dojo. While The Matrix seems like a highly unlikely reality, the simulation hypothesis is something that has caught on in recent years by the likes of Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson. So what is the simulation hypothesis? Hmm, it's basically a hypothesis that says we may be living in a simulation. Whew, that was easy. But there are actually two forms of the simulation hypothesis. One that assumes the simulation was created by creatures within our physical universe, but are just more advanced, and we'll call that one the materialist hypothesis. The other argues that Master Chief and Halo doesn't exist on the same three-dimensional planes as the one who created him. So the simulation we are living in was likely created by entities that are not confined to our physical universe. While the consciousness hypothesis argues that non-physical consciousness created the virtual reality, the materialist version is much more grounded, pun intended. It was most famously posited by Nick Bostrom in the early 2000s. Listen up, this is where it gets interesting. In the early 1970s, the video game Pong blew the world away. And it was just two sticks with a square ball that could move. And we friggin' loved it. Just 30 years later, we got Halo, and that was way more than a couple of sticks. It was an entire world that you could make your avatar run around in and blow stuff up. Now, just 20 years after that, we have virtual reality games. And if you haven't tried one, this is an entirely new level. The game surrounds you in three dimensions, and while it's not completely photorealistic yet, it's enough to knock you off your balance. Let's assume we are not the only life forms in this massive universe. It's hard to believe we're not in this 13 billion year expansion, so it stands to reason that there have been species like us that evolved like us in a different part of the universe. But all of their evolution started a mere 2,000 years before ours did. So let's say around the time of Jesus, they are where we are now. Keep in mind, 2,000 years in a 13 billion year cosmological time frame is a fart in the wind. Let's assume by the time Muhammad rolled around, they've now reached a level of evolution where they can create fully responsive 3D virtual realities that are literally indistinguishable from what we consider base reality. Over the last 1500 years, these beings may have created virtual realities that are evolving to create their own virtual realities, that are evolving to create their own virtual realities, and so on, and so on, and so on. What we consider to be base reality could be multiple layers above where we think we are. For all we know, we may be in one of those virtual sub-realities. Okay, so any good hypothesis needs evidence to back it up. At the moment, there is no concrete evidence to back it up. Though stay tuned, there are some science experiments being done right now that are attempting to see if they can find flaws in the matrix. But for now, we can only look at ideas within what we do know and find some pretty interesting inferences. First, when you create a virtual reality in our current reality, how well it can be created is limited by the speed of the CPU within the computer that is creating it. Literally every simulation we create has a speed limit. Well, our universe has one too. It's called the speed of light. Nothing can go faster than our CPU. I mean, speed of light. Is that evidence? No, but it's sure interesting. Second, and perhaps the weirdest one, is revealed in quantum entanglement. We have verifiable science that two photons can become entangled and directly affect each other billions of light years away, instantaneously, without having to cross the distance and time that light would have to travel. This is established science, and it's spooky. In a virtual reality game, what you see off in the distance is not actually off in the distance. It's just created to look like it's off in the distance, when in reality, it's just a different set of data designed to simulate a condition that we consider reality. So in a virtual reality, distance doesn't actually exist. So if we are in a virtual reality, photons can traverse billions of light years faster than light because they're not actually traversing any distance at all. Like I said, it's spooky stuff. In fact, quantum entanglement was something that Einstein himself called spooky action at a distance. He died with no explanation for it. But one of the big questions in all of this hypothesizing is, if we are living in a virtual reality, does it actually change anything? Not really. Pain still hurts, steak still tastes like steak, 
And when you're in the middle of suffering, it sure as hell doesn't feel like a game. So whether it's virtual or not, it's your experience, and it's quite valid. If the concept of living in a virtual reality gets your juices flowing, check out videos on YouTube about a thing called the double slit experiment. I'll get around to making one myself one day soon. And if you want to find out more about that consciousness-based simulation hypothesis, click on the video that is being presented to you now in digital form.